This time, in September 2014, the culprit must have gotten into my Yahoo Mail which was the recipient of the Gummy Beer and Graveyard series, since the single email sent before Regent's death was deleted. But not before I had saved a copy. This email which proves the culprit knew of Regent's death before it took place was deleted. I assume by the culprit. He must have not wanted anyone to realize he knew ahead of time about Regent's death if his identity was ever found out. I took these emails, the Gummy Bear and Graveyard series, to a lawyer in Eastcote. I told him what had happened to Regent Exeter and how I got those emails. He said he was a very eminent lawyer, that nobody could normally sit in his presence without paying him a thousand pounds. He said he was speaking to me for free because he was saddened by Regent's death. He considered Regent to be his crony because he had also studied in a nearby elitist school and played football with Regent's school. The lawyer was a few years older than me and Regent. The lawyer telephoned somebody who would know exactly what to do under the circumstances. Then he told me that I should write a letter to the superintendent of police in Uxbridge explaining what had happened. If that superintendent was interested, he would reply. If he did not reply, there was no law in the land to further the matter. At present, you are on Chapter 8 Part 5, Chapter 8 ends here. It was written around six months ago. There is an information update added to the end of it on the 2nd of February 2024. The Home Office has sent a file in response to my subject access request which has 4,000 pages and I have not read through it. I will probably have more updates, once I read through it. What I do update is after speaking to my father in 2024. He denies being involved in Vigil Wortley's scam. He did not hack my Gmail and does not know my communications with Regent Exeter. He said he also has no letterhead. I was able to pull out this rambling file that was used by Basingstoke Police in charging me with harassment without violence against plaintiff Vigil Wortley my bona fide biological sister. I realized the letterhead was not that of my father but a letterhead that had been generated on pages done by that printer was the blurred email address of a Basingstoke police officer. Observing my father's letterhead on the the emails provided by Basingstoke police in my turmoil was the only thing to link my father to my private emails with Regent Exeter. That leaves me with only one suspect. Suspected of what? Precisely of intercepting my emails with Regent Exeter. That is the UK police themselves. There was one item on those files that made me think my father's letterhead was on those emails in my mental turmoil. There was my father's title, VU2KV, present in the sender detail. His email was not present in the sender's detail or long version. It looked like after these emails from me the late Regent Exeter had been printed and after that, my father's title was cut and pasted by Basingstoke Police. I feel the reader will understand this if I show them the emails in question. Recalling how police hacked me in 2010 and 2011, destroying strategic digital files detailed in Chapter 4, I see it has to the police intercepting all my communications. Police once followed me on the train to Regents in Chiffnall. If I recall right they dropped in at Regents home. They said my father asked them to stalk me. This was in 2012 or early 2013. I now believe the police were lying about my father ordering this. I do not feel the police should be hacking the personal communication of a person or following them around in their private relationships with other people. They should explain if I bear the likeness of Osama bin Laden or Abu Qatada. So why do they hack me and follow me? Do they have too many idle officers with idle equipment looking for amusement? Why is Ireland keeping me in a same-sex illiterate dump from which I have no escape for life, and have been denied medical care? They can easily shoot down my opinion using one million witnesses. I asked on the 2nd of February 2024 why the police of the UK allowed my sister to hide my father at a remote location in Cornwall. I don't think a remote location where there is no Wi-Fi and far from medical facilities is ideal for my father nor would it be his choice. It is not good for the elderly and critically ill to be moved around, as this tends to bump them off. My father would be obliged to speak only well of her to the police if he understands that the state may not be a good carer even if a relative taking care is abusive. 
People in captivity become mentally and morally dependent on their captors. The stay in Cornwall is too extended for me not to be suspicious of my sister and brother-in-law's motives. I have already emphasized none of my communications oral or typed contained video wordly. I also never consorted with Pembroke who do not have personal details from me. I did not take their treatment. I support the old-fashioned rule that people with no medical qualifications are not entitled to medical treatment. Moreover, I think most services offered by British mental centers are for those entitled to public funds. I was not that. And I am a foreigner unfamiliar with mental systems. Psychiatrists have been around for more than a century. But these crowds of unqualified women acting as mental health who double as a backward immigrant coffee house and deputies for DSS or social services are alien to me. I am not from a culture where all women do as they are told when shouted at by someone in a stronger position, which is I understand, 100% in the UK. The only possible service by Pembroke to me was those private, intimate, unmonitored sessions offered to women of the public by Pembroke employees with female genitalia to achieve mind-blowing intellectual reforms in women of the public who are designated as their patients. I flatly refused when Pembroke men kicked and banged the door as I would not knowingly slip my head into the jaws of a shark. My boyfriend felt I could happily ignore them but I felt this sort of thing cannot be allowed to go on. Two lacked police protection against their tyranny. I feel a lot of UK women dislike female intimacy providers like Pembroke and do not have a good opinion of them. However, I think that if I did say those incoherent and ultra-female things written in the allegations of Vigil Wortley, it would be okay to subject me to those intimate sessions with female talented Pembroke employees. That way I could be a disordered ultra-female maniac with persons as lowly as myself. This comment would be an insult to mental health workers if they are a universal support to all of humanity. This is a bogus claim, however. Lies are told by whoever tells them. The fact that mental health workers cannot be questioned by criminal justice for their honesty of reporting is not an indication they would be honest. I am sure if the Home Office investigates they will end up finding bits in the harassment story that sound inconsistent as well as hardcore physical and forensic evidence that I am not guilty of the allegations made, and these are not my values and beliefs. There were many procedural errors in my conviction I can explain as a non-legally trained person to anyone who asks. This is about the murder of Regent Exeter. I have said a prayer to God to support my preference my death shall precede one of those intimate sessions with those wonder women who can be forced. It's not right to live under a trumped-up illiterate or female personality in the UK or Ireland. Or treated like I am Abu Qatada in terms of surveillance and treated all my life like I am a serial killer. Paradoxically I am only allowed women who are not suitable for high-level serial killers and whatnot. I want worldwide publicity of my slow death in the UK and Ireland, explain to the world why you are doing all this. Regent was a beautiful human nobody would want to kill. I don't think my sister is taking of my father in Cornwall and it is not proper I forced him to never find out about my father not even if he has died. Getting a lawyer is a pipe dream. No lawyer has a remit to assist me. The Law Society search engine does not work properly and their phone is presently reserved for lawyers. Besides the Law Society, phone receptionists cannot hear your problem and tell you what area of law you need. The search engines are more useful than the human operators. And ultimately there is no remit for a lawyer to help. Does anyone remember when David Cameron was Prime Minister some policemen and women who were strong swimmers stood back and let an 11-year-old boy die? They argued there was no remit for them to save the boy. They would be punished if they helped without remit. Then David Cameron created a new remit to help outside of remits with no risk of punishment so this human rights abuse will never be repeated. Regent did not have anybody to help with how he was being treated by his society and died as a result. I had some correct ideas to help him but not the sense to detect urgency. There is no one to help me either. Remember how in the UK if you leave letters door to door narrating your human rights abuses you will be deemed insane by the police. You will be called incoherent by police even if your letter is coherent. UK neighbors will make a complaint to police if anyone leaves a personal note outside their front door saying for example that they were mistreated by a psychiatric agency. 
It is 100% watertight and nobody will help. The UK expects all problems to be addressed by agencies including the mental service. But sometimes the agencies don't help so people need to be more humane and take responsibility for their fellow humans and not just give them a free meal ticket. Although in Ireland people won't petition to police to have you locked up if they get a note written by someone about their human rights abuses, total neglect can happen in Ireland also. I suppose total neglect happens everywhere in the world. I would like people worldwide to hear and understand my stories even in the event of my death. My mother said in 2010 an immigration lawyer told her I do not have even one human right not just Article 8 in the UK human rights. I would like to know if I am banned from all countries for all human rights.